Hello, welcome to Word of Inspiration and thank you for joining me. My name is Dr. Bertha Sewa Aye and I present Word of Inspiration, a daily program that is designed to encourage you in your daily living and to inspire and motivate you to be the best version of yourself. Today, I'm continuing my series on God's purpose for gender identity and today my message is entitled X and Y chromosomes and the eunuch. And my text is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 24, verses 3 to 4, 3 to 5. And it reads that, And the Pharisees came unto him, tempting him and saying, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall the man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. And my hope is that by the time I'm done, you will understand what the X and Y chromosomes do, and who a eunuch is, because Jesus went on to talk about the eunuch. But before I get into the crux of my message, I just want to encourage somebody from Psalm 40. The Bible says that I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined his ears unto me, and he heard my cry. He took me out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings, and he put a new song in my mouth, even praise to my God. I don't know where you are in your life. If you're ever in a situation where it feels like you're in a miry clay, miry clay means things are sticky, nothing seems permanent, there's a lot of fluctuations, and you don't seem to be making progress in life, because if you're in the miry clay, you can't step forward. God wants you to know just keep waiting upon him keep praying about that situation because god is able to lift you up out of the miry clay like the psalmist and set your feet upon a rock a rock is a sure place a rock doesn't shift unlike the miry clay and he will put a new song in your mouth and you will praise him so i just want to encourage you with that so let's delve into our message what was the context of this in deuteronomy 24 moses had given a law that said, if you have disfavor with your wife or if you hit your wife for any reason, you can just write her a letter that says, I don't want you anymore, go your way. And they had been practicing divorce, but they went to tempt Jesus. And he tried to explain to them what God meant in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 when he said, and he made them male and female in his own image created in them. What Jesus was trying to say was that, Moses gave you that law because you don't understand male and female differences. If you understand it, you won't hit your wife and you won't put her away. You know, sad to say when a man and a woman come together to get married, the wedding day is a beautiful day, everybody's happy for them, they're happy because they're in love. What happens that they start to hate each other? And I know that happens because in the book of Ephesians, Paul tells the church, men, be not bitter against your wives. It means that marriages can get to a point where a man is bitter against his wife or decides, as Deuteronomy 24 says, I don't have favor with her anymore. Let me read Deuteronomy 24 verse 1 to 5. When a man has taken a wife and married her, and it comes to pass that she finds no favor in his eyes, that's the only reason, no favor, because he has found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it to her hand and send her out of her, his house. Even the way it's been put so derogatory, just write a letter that I don't want you anymore, out. And when she's departed out of her house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband, the second husband also starts to hate her, that's what the Bible uses, and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house or if the latter husband died, who took her to be his wife, her former husband, that's the first one, may not take her again to wife after she's defiled and for that she's an abomination before the Lord and thou shalt not cause the land to sin with the Lord that God giveth you for an inheritance. Verse 5, when a man taketh hath a new wife, he shall not go to war, neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year and cheer up the wife which she had taken. Truthfully, if men took a year off for a honeymoon, I don't think they would get to a point where they hate their wives or their wives find no favor. Nevertheless, they came to Jesus with this tough question. Jesus, what do you want us to do? Do you agree with the law? And Jesus answered, have you not 
know, right, that he made the male and female, they're supposed to be different. Of course, when a man and a woman stay together for a while, she's having her period, she talks too much, he's always watching the news, getting together with buddies. You two are different. Don't hate each other. Celebrate your differences. That's what Jesus was trying to say. And he said, because they are male and female, and they're supposed to complement one another, Jesus said, for this cause, because you're male and female, shall a man leave father and mother, shall cleave unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Because as I was demonstrating in my previous message, there's such a thing as monoecious animals or plants where the male and female are in one body. God knew how to do that, but he separated men and women made them different, unique, with different physical, biochemical, and physiological um, processes so that they can come together and complement one another. Verse 6, Wherefore, they are not two anymore, but one flesh. Marriage, therefore, brings two different individuals, man and a woman, together to be one flesh. He says, What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. But then they were not satisfied, and then they said unto him, you know, still referring to the same law. Why did Moses then give a commandment, or give a, writ a writing of divorcement, and say, put her away? And he said unto them, Mo Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except be for fornication, and shall marry another committed adultery. Uh-oh. If it's not for fornication and you just decide, I hate her, I don't have favor with her, I put her away, Jesus said you commit adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away also commits adultery. Then his disciples said unto him, if this, now this time it's not the Pharisees, the disciples said, if this is the case be so, if the case of the man be so with his wife, then you know what, Jesus, maybe it's giving good not to marry. You know why? Because they thought we might get to that point too where we just want to put away our wives. Maybe we should just leave the woman alone. And he said unto them, All men cannot receive the saying, saying, save to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs. Eunuch is somebody who has been crushed, castrated to the point where they're not fertile. Which were born so from the mother's womb. I want you to know this. Number one, you're not born from the mother's womb because I'll be explaining it. Number two, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Number two, and three, there are eunuchs which were which have made themselves eunuch eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. So I just want to explain to you, male and female, X, Y, and what a eunuch is, because that's the topic of discussion. So these are the X and Y chromosomes. I showed it to you before. This is the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. Men have X and Y chromosomes while women have two X chromosomes. Now, quick thing about the chromosome. So the X chromosome has 1,100 genes. Not all of them determine female characteristics. For example, on the X chromosome, it carries the gene for color blindness. The Y chromosome, though, is very small, carries only 78 genes, but over 50% of those genes direct the formation of the testes, the formation of testosterone, and other male characteristics. In fact, at two months, testosterone starts expressing itself in the gonads and helps a, 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 a baby boy develop testes which descend. If there's not enough testosterone, the testes might not descend. Having said that, what did Jesus mean by some are born eunuchs? There are certain abnormalities in this XY chromosome that give rise to certain syndromes. The first one I'd like to discuss with you is one that is called Kleinefelter syndrome. In Kleinefelter syndrome, a man is born with an extra X chromosome. And this is what it looks like. So this man, which I picked up off the internet, has XXY chromosome, an extra one. And so you would notice that he has breast development, not enough beard, not enough hair on his body. And if 
you know, if he if we were to do a full body exam, we would find he has a smaller te um, testes, he has smaller male genitals, and almost 100% of them are sterile. They cannot have children because the excess Y prevents them from having children. So this is what Jesus meant by some are born eunuchs. So some of these people may go ahead and marry and find that they cannot have children and they need cytogenetic testing. Another one that's abnormal is those who are born with an extra Y, XYY. These people are a little taller than usual and they are normal in that they might have some speech and other abnormalities, but on the average, they are able to go ahead and have children, but they are extremely tall. It's called the XYY syndrome. And this is an image of somebody with the XYY syndrome. And then there are other people who are born with three Xs. These women are extremely tall. This is just an image of one of them. These women are extremely tall, but they're fertile. But I want to show you another one. It's called Turner syndrome. These women don't have the extra X. They have OX or X. They only have one X. They are almost always sterile. They cannot have children. And the way you recognize them is that they're usually short. They have a webbed neck, meaning if you look at their neck. So as I'm talking, I'm sure you might be able to recognize some people, you know, in the past who have a webbed neck. They have short fingers, um, short toes, and... Um, abnormalities of the aorta, elbow, elbow abnormalities, widely spaced nipples, and uh, sometimes they have brown spots, and normally they don't menstruate. So this is what Jesus was talking about when he said, some are born eunuchs. And then there are others who become eunuchs for the sake of the gospel, even though they have the normal X and Y. Now, why is this important for those who decide that they're going to become eunuchs for the sake of the gospel? Now, the testosterone not only helps to produce, um, to form the, test, the testes, but it allows formation of more testosterone, which drives aggression, sexual desire. And Paul called this a burn or an itch because the hormone allows men to always feel like having sexual intercourse. And the Bible says some people can decide to inhibit this feeling just because they want to serve Christ. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse seven, Paul says, I wish that all men were as myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, every one after, after this manner and another after that. Now concerning the things you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. And let the husband write unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise the wife unto the husband. The wife has no power over her body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband has no power over his own body, but the wife. Defraud not one another, but accept with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, lest Satan tempt you for your incontinency. But I speak with permission, not of commandment, for I would that all men were even I. And I said, I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide as I, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it's better to burn, to marry than to burn. What was Paul saying? Being male and female, there's that sexual desire. And God brought men and women together to get married so that some of these things will not override us. In fact, to the point where he says that, Satan can tempt you because of your incontinency. And we see men and women these days all the time, some married deciding to fulfill that burn outside of marriage or some single and instead of marrying, decide to engage in fornication. But Paul said, it's better to marry than to burn. Well, today I'm gonna end here, I'll continue this tomorrow, but I just wanted to show you that X and Y chromosomes make people male and female. These chromosomes lead to formation of hormones that distinguish men from women and that it causes a so-called burn. And some are eunuchs, as Jesus explained, and God wants people to stay together 
and not men hate their wives or find disfavor and put them away. They should recognize that women are different and men are different. God bless you for listening. Please say this after me. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and never below. I'm a woman and I love it. I'm a man and I love it. Please join me tomorrow. This has been Dr. Bertha Ayi. God richly bless you.